and welcome to Think Future. My name is Chris Kalabukas, and once again, we're coming at you live from deep, deep, deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking innovation startups, the future, not necessarily those and not necessarily in that order. If you're watching on YouTube, smack that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop it out on Apple Podcasts. I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, my uh, car lease is coming up soon. So I have to look for a new car. And I'm thinking to myself, there's such a, I don't know if this is the same in every industry, but it probably is the same in industry. It's probably the same in many, many industries. It's that you have reality over here. So the reality of where things are in the real world, the kind of cars with the kind of features and the kind of things you can get in those cars in the real world. And then you have over here, you have concept cars. And concept cars are amazing. They've got the most amazing colors. They've got the most amazing designs. They have the most amazing features. They can do unbelievable things. But then you have reality. And the distance between this and this is huge. And not only is it huge, a lot of the stuff that comes out of this never ends up over here. Even though it's a perfectly reasonable thing, you can see something in a concept car that you go, wow, I would buy that in a second if that feature existed in the real life. And then you know it's technically able because a lot of the people who watch this show understand that everything will happen. The only question is when. The technology is not the problem. It's the human beings. It's the political systems. It's the business. It's capitalism. It's all sorts of things. It's all sorts of human things that we have created. We have personally created these human things that stop us from innovating as quickly as creating these concept cars for the road. Look at this Cybertruck. It should have been delivered this year. It should have been delivered. I mean, where is it? Where's the new design? When will we actually see it on the road? And will it be substantially different from the concept car? Probably. Probably. So I saw... Um, concept the other day of a Hyundai Ionic 5. Now, I really like the Ionic 5. I think I told you guys before that I really love the design of the Ionic 5. That that is the design of a futuristic automobile. That's one of the reasons why I like the Cybertruck. We have, we are stuck in this morass of designing cars. All these cars look exactly the same as each other. And I think I talked about before a long, long time ago about how, why do all these cars look the same? And all these cars look the same because of a number of things, right? Mimetic theory, everybody doesn't want, nobody wants a car that looks too different. Everyone wants a car that looks very similar to everybody else's car. But at the same time, they want something new and different on the edge, right? So the only place these car manufacturers have been able to do something like that is an electric vehicle. So EVs can do something different because if you think about it, the design of the automobile, it can be so different because you don't have that engine there, you don't have the gas tank there, you don't have this, you have that. It, it's, a clean, it's a cleaner slate when it comes to design. Even so, cleaner slate when it comes to design. They could design these cars to look like almost anything. In fact, I would love for them to go back into old retro sci-fi movies, like even like, um, what's that Woody Allen one? Sleeper. And design cars like that. I mean, why can't we design cars like that? They're like bubbles, right? Like plastic bubbles. But I digress. Maybe the Apple car would be a plastic bubble. Who knows? So my point is, is that we have the technology. We can build really cool automobiles. We can take this technology that's there and create really cool looking automobiles. And we can probably even do it in gas powered cars. Because if you ask me, electric vehicles aren't there yet. I had a Polestar the other day when I was, I rented a Polestar and it just, I mean, it was a nice car and everything, but there's just too much there's not, it's still not there yet. I felt like I was driving something that was still in beta. EVs are still in beta, if you ask me. And this Hyundai Ionic 5 that I saw a video of had wheels that could actually turn independently 90 degrees. So you know how normally your car, your car wheels can steer that much. And then, and if you've got rear wheels, they don't turn or they're maybe slightly if they've got some kind of adjustable rear steering. But these wheels on this Ionic 5, they were independently operated electric motors on each wheel. So the wheels themselves could turn completely inwards, completely outwards. They could go from 90 degrees to this, to this, to this, to this. They could turn in all directions, well, almost all directions. 
just think of it. If you were if you were trying to park your car, it would turn. You could pull up in front of the space, turn the wheels 90 degrees, and go slide in. Think of how maneuverable that automobile would be on the road. You would be able to switch lanes so much faster than you could with a regular automobile. Or if you're getting to the end of a road or a, a dead end in a parking lot, you could actually have the entire vehicle spin on its axis and face in the other direction. You should see some of these videos. Search uh, Hyundai IONIQ 5 90 degree angle wheels or something like that on YouTube, which is what you're watching right now. Take a look at it. It's phenomenal. And you think to yourself, man, that is really cool. I want that. Is it coming into production? No, probably never. Probably never. And then not only do you have the people who are saying, who are saying this is cool, you also have the should we's on the other side going, well, can you imagine what you would have to do to manage something like that? Of course it would all be automated by AI. You would say, I want to park. Boom, press the parking button, slides in. The only time that it, I don't think those wheels would be controlled by a person. They would be, have to be controlled by AI. And it's kind of like, well, what happens if you lose power and you're driving on the freeway? Are they going to flip all, all over the place? I'm like, no, they're going to be like elevators, right? That actually lock into place straight or provide that little limited amount of mobility for the front wheels if something were to happen to the power. I mean, look at our cars today. If they run out of power, they're toast. If your electric vehicle goes below 20 per, 20%, what are you going to do with it? You're going to have to you're going to bring somebody over with a with a <laughs> gas-powered generator to fire it back up again. It's insane. So, this is like any other industry. I'm looking at the cars that are out there and I'm like, why is it that there's such a huge disconnect between the innovation in the industry and where we actually are in the industry and all of this stuff in the middle everything that's keeping us from innovation to reality is ourselves we are the ones that are holding ourselves back we are the ones holding ourselves back with governance we are the ones that are holding ourselves back with with making money <laughs> being capitalists we're the ones that are holding ourselves back i mean there's probably plenty of people out there who would pay for these things but there's so many laws and things in between, in between those two things that it's extremely difficult for somebody to go from innovation to reality. And now that I think about it, now that I talk about it, I think we're in the same boat in almost everything. We can think and talk innovation all day long. We can develop innovative new products all the time. We can envision new products. We can create new products. We can write that. We can create point of, uh, proof of concepts for new products. We can create amazing ideas for new products. But then when it comes to implementation, when it comes to turning them into real things, even if the technology is available, there's always someone or something or some set of humans in the way who are saying, ah, ah, don't think you can do that think you can do that sorry can't be done can't be done and even if you try to do that we're gonna push back against you and and if we're, you're lucky out of the ten things that you could do with that really cool concept car we might let you have one and a half one and a half of those things might sort of squeak its way through so yeah I mean the reality is the reason why we don't innovate is because we have all of these individuals and policies and things in between the innovation and the reality forcing us to stick to what we're doing today. If we could just turn that thing, break that thing down, maybe turn it into Swiss cheese, break some holes through it, let the innovation shine through, then maybe who knows how much further ahead we'd be. Who knows how much further ahead we'd be if we actually broke down some of that superstructure in the middle that's keeping us from taking the innovation to the reality. Who knows where we can be? And that's what I'd love to hear. If you have done something like that, if you've done something, if you've been able to sort of smash that wall down or break holes in that wall or like feed things through holes in that wall, I'd love to hear from you. I want to hear from you on the show because that's the one thing that most of my audience does is that they are struggling to take things from here to here. 
no matter what industry they're in. And if you found ways of putting things through this wall without blowing everything up, then I would love to hear from you. That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future.